Hang on a minute. Is that creosote? Yeah. Get yeah. off your fence. Do you know what, cre- <laughs> do you know what creosote is, Micah? Oh, is that for your ass, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> What's, oh, what's creosote, it's mate? It's one of the fences to oh, stand oh, mate. Oh, on I the thought you fence, meant, you're on the I fence. I thought it was, it was some creep on your ass is so from sitting That's on the fence. and shoot it, cream, you idiot. <laughs> Kyle's cream. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer and Micah Richards. Um, Micah, you must have had a relatively quiet weekend. Um, Alan, you were doing Match of the Day 2 uh, last night. I did Match of the Day on Saturday and it, um, it was one of those shows that comes up every now and again, which um, is totally transformed by the news of the day. And um, that, of course, was that Luton Town captain Tom Lockyer collapsed on the pitch um, after suffering, uh, well, a cardiac arrest during the match against uh, Bournemouth on Saturday. Um, We're recording this on Monday morning, and as things stand, Tom is still in hospital, uh, stable, um, but undergoing tests and scans. So um, hopefully everything uh, will be all right. Um, I've been on, I think, Four times I've done Match of the Day where I can think of of, of similar things. There's Fabrice Mwamba. Um, I was recording that day. There was the Leicester helicopter incident, of course, with the owner, that tragedy. Um, and I was also on the game when Ericsson uh, collapsed on, on the pitch as well. And um, I have to say, it's always in, in, incredibly moving and emotional. And but but also when you when you're doing the show like Match of the Day, you you have to keep your you know, you focus on trying to get the tone right, a shift in the programme. So it's pretty chaotic um, while things are going on. Um, neither neither of you were there on um, Saturday night, but I'm sure you're on top of the story. I was at uh, I was at St James's Park, Gary. I was at the game Newcastle Fulham, so um, I was aware of something going on. And then, of course, um, can see on my on my phone that that message is. Uh, or flashing up and trying to keep me uh, informed of what's uh, of what's going on. Um, and you're right. I mean, we're all at a football match, and then it all all of a sudden it becomes pretty irrelevant, doesn't it? And then you're just thinking, goodness me, I hope he's uh, I hope he's okay. And of course, with what happened to him in uh, in May, uh, May, wasn't it May or June in the playoff? Um, then you're just thinking, oh my God, let's let's just pray and hope he's uh, and hope he's all right. And and it looks as if he is. And fingers crossed that. Uh, that continues to be good news, and we send him our very, very best wishes. Yeah, we most certainly do. Indeed, I'd like to echo them words that Alan said. And I was actually doing the game with you with Kristen Eriksson in the Euros. Yes, of course you were. And it was very, very difficult yeah. because you know me, my personality, having to bring it down, getting the right tone, and obviously you, as a presenter, want to come to to us as pundits and have a view. But it's the first time in my in my whole life. I've not known what to say. And all I did say is, well, let's not think of the worst. There'll be a little bit of uh, hope, you know? Yeah. And I just played on that and then he got better, then he got back playing. And it, it's a difficult position to be in because you can't teach someone how to broadcast when this news happens. So, you know, relying on the experience of someone like you, Gary, or a, an experienced pundit at the time, but you always deal with it in the best possible way and all the stuff behind the scenes as well. To be honest, that, that I had no real experience of that either, Michael, because that was the first time I've been involved um, in a live broadcast with something like that. Whereas whereas um, Moamba, the helicopter incident, and of course Saturday, um, they were all match of the days. So you had time to sort of work out what you're going to do. And um, on Saturday with, with the Tom incident, it was... You know what it's like now, the cameras tend to cut off these things, yeah. so you couldn't really tell um, what was going on at the time, but we did have time to piece something together, and then, as you quite rightly say, Mike, it's about trying to get the tone right, um, and and I, I, I think we managed to do that, and we, we had a bit of time, but the Ericsson one I did find um, very challenging. Um, Obviously, I think there was a little bit of criticism around that time for us as well, that we stayed on pictures too long at the ground. But what happens normally and what would happen here, um, which I think it's probably quite important to stay at the ground, is normally they just cut away and don't show any images. 
Um, but don't forget in this country, um, um, whoever's hosting the game, whether it be Sky, whether it be BT, whether it be BBC, because they're shared on Saturdays, um, there's there's kind of a, a thinking that you will cut away mm. from images. And that's what they did on yeah. Saturday. For those of us that were in the studio, we could see the live pictures. Um, so they actually took us by surprise um, during the Euros um, when we weren't in control that they would cut they cut to pictures actually showing people surrounding him and that sort of thing and and, and some people obviously um, took offence by that and then once they started to do that again we we cut back to the studio but then you're relying on you know, Mike uh, and people without the experience of of they're not war correspondents yeah. or or tragic you know they're not used to kind of tragedy i shouldn't compare it with war that's very different but it got to the stage really where you, you talk for a mu few minutes and uh, what yeah. can you say because you can't talk about football um, that's right because it pales into insignificance so you just talk about the events on the pitch and eventually we handed back to to bbc one i think they they cut to the news but um but but Saturdays was different when you've got match of the day and you're hosting it and all we were really doing um, most of Saturday evening once we prepared what we how we were going to cover it was, was was kind of pushing to find out the latest update because obviously we go out out live on television so anyway yep. we wish Tom all Absolutely. the very best I mean obviously the you know the first thing is that he gets healthy again um, and I mean the fact that it happened a few months ago it's it, whatever happens here you, you think you might have seen an, at the end of someone's football career um, which is always um, a sad moment no I'm not you know I don't want to premeditate that but um, you, you know you feel for him and it's going it's going to be very difficult isn't it yeah Oof. I mean also Gary you have to say how the incredible job the medics did again and, and everyone in the way that everyone responded um, but I said earlier didn't it? it football becomes irrelevant it's about whether he can operate as normal and really that's all that matters and fingers crossed that he can fingers crossed he'll yeah. he'll get there he's a warrior he's done yeah. it before the, also um i go back to the others the, the the football players that have had similar incidents on the pitch um ericsson and moamba they were both you know okay moamba was uh, obviously i think both of those were miraculous in many ways particularly moamba um but it just shows you, doesn't it? If you're going to have an incident like this, if you're going to have a, a heart attack or something, that there's no better place to Football do it than, pitch. On, <laughs> than, than during a game, particularly a high-profile game, yeah. like because of the, the the medics that are they're on hand. Having said that, it might well be the sport that has you know the fact that you, you you you're running so hard that might have caused it in the first place. But um, um, it also happened with Jinlar, didn't it? In a in a I think it was might have been a charity game. He, yeah, he collapsed. Right. Was um, Mark Vivian Four was another have, one as well? I think wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And so it's it, it's not entirely uncommon, but it's always it's yeah. difficult and traumatic and emotional uh, when it happens. Uh, let's let's move on to uh, looking back at the the weekend's football. Um, Liverpool and Manchester United, and you'd have been covering that one for match of the day too yesterday. God, that was a damp squib, wasn't it? Oh! I mean, that was hardly a proper chance in the game. Um, the only bit I enjoyed about the match was was watching Trent's passing. Um, aside from that, I couldn't oh, think it of was, uh, it. Was it was a rotten game? I can't believe I had to watch it live and then sit watch it again on match of the day. It was it was a bloody awful game. The standard was poor. From I mean. I know Liverpool were the better team and had more chances, more possession. Um, but the standard of forward play from both teams was terrible. Um, both teams actually got into some good positions. Man United twice in the second half. Uh, with, uh, Hoyland should have scored, missed it. Um, but uh, it, was a, it was a really poor game. Man United had to defend, defend, defend. And Liverpool just had... Nothing in attack. It was one of those days yesterday for them that they just couldn't find the back of the net. It was poor game. <laughs> I, I got a text from a Manchester United supportive friend, friend of mine. He said, it's come to this. The highlight of the game is watching Johnny Evans punt long balls up the touchline <laughs> in the hope, nay, the dream, that Anthony can maybe get on the end of it and win a throw-in. <laughs> oh, goodness me. But it is, I mean... I, I actually 
look at Man United as a positive. After being and playing Liverpool, we all thought, every pundit, presenter, yep. fan, thought they was going to get absolutely mm -hmm. pumped. But in if actual fact, Alan's totally right. In terms of forward play, they could have done a lot more. But Man U was never, ever really exposed. Like... I actually thought Man United had the better chances with Ganacho. If he takes that little touch, Trent don't get that little foot on it. I just believe that's a performance they needed to go to Anfield. We've all been there. It is a tough place to go. And for some reason, there wasn't that electric sort of atmosphere that we normally get. And it just played into Man United's hands. And it got to half time, they got to 70 minutes, and then they started believing then that they could get something. So. I actually have to give Man United, from a defensive point of view, a lot of credit. The game was awful. We we're know talking. That. We're talking about Manchester United here. Like that, they're, I know, F, I know. they're like they're a League Two team going to Anfield. That's what it felt like, though, didn't it? If that's what it felt like. Yeah, and that's what it looked yeah. like. It, it, it actually yeah. did. We said that in the office. This looks like a League Two team who's gone to Anfield in the yeah. FA Cup, hanging on for dear life yeah. to try and get get a replay or get a point out the game, whatever. It's like, oh. Liverpool had 34 yeah. shots. <laughs> and actually, if you look at the game, though, they never really looked like scoring. They never no. created an absolute out and out. They had, might have had 34 shots, but they never had any good shots. They were, I mean, they were defended really well. I mean, Mo Salah yeah, was... Yeah, they did defend well. Yeah, had a really poor game. Darwin Nunes and... Yeah, it was. Um, it just was never yeah. going to happen for Liverpool. And we, we, all we have to mention Colin Maynou, though, don't we? Yeah. He's been outstanding. The games that he's played in the way from home, big games we talk. Go to. He did well at Everton. I think mm -hmm. I remember that game. Um, he did well against Liverpool, getting on the ball and just doing the basic things. Nothing too extravagant, just doing the basics really well, tackling when he needs to, right position. He's obviously comfortable on the ball, but he took no risk for a young player who's, what, 17, 18, to go to Anfield. Yes, it wasn't the best atmosphere for a normal, if you want to call it, derby, or the, the two biggest clubs in English football. But he had a really level, mature performance uh, again. And I just thought it was outstanding. I really did. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal are back on top. Did it a different different um, way. The Arsenal. Way. Yeah. Very good, weren't they? Well, that was one of the games we we, we didn't see, obviously. Um, those of us at home, yeah. you'd have seen all of it. Um, I just we just yeah, saw the highlights. Um but I mean my tip for the title, <laughs> guys, they're looking all right. Yeah. Honestly, if if they win the league and you get it right, you, oh you're gonna be horrible. It's gonna be them or Spurs, isn't it? It's gonna be North London <laughs> the looks of it. <laughs> By the way, I know we keep mentioning him, but oh my god, uh Declan Rice again yesterday. Yeah, outstanding was he? Honestly, he was just in everything he did, whether he was protecting the back four, whether he was bursting forward with the uh, with the ball, having efforts at goal, he was fantastic. And right, he said it last night. He's making a hundred million pounds look yeah. like a bargain. I, th that's quite a statement, isn't it? For a defense. Is that is that only because of Chelsea that boys was, though? He was uh, he was he was that good, honestly. Well, they put them they put the price up, didn't they? Really, the way yeah. they've gone about yeah. buying defensive midfield players. Um, but yeah, um, Arteta was um, uh, booked again. Um, I mean, he obviously got away with that. Um, the charges they dropped them, didn't they? Didn't it was return. a three-man independent panel, wasn't it? The panel was Ian Wright, Tony yeah. Adams, and Paul Merson. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. He does get carried away on the touchline, though, Micah, doesn't he? I mean, you know what? I don't get carried that away, but... but I, I just love it. I think there's a fine line, yeah. and I think he's always sort of teetering on that line a little bit, but. He knows, he knows he's got to be at his absolute best to win this Premier League. All them who doubted him when he come first and he won the FA Cup and then he sort of like Arteta out after that. But he slowly built a really good, organised, solid team who can score goals as well. And people like Havertz who people's writing off and... We don't know really his best position, but he's starting to play well. Or he's starting to make a difference in terms of scoring or assisting. So I understand it from the manager's point of view when he knows what he's up against. Liverpool looked like they were somewhat back to the best apart from, from this weekend. You know Man City going to be there. Spurs are going to be there. So yeah, 
Um, I understand why he gets a little bit animated on the side. Yeah. Um, Liverpool Arsenal next mm. weekend. Oh, that's 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 a Seriously, biggie. Look, so it should be a, <laughs> should be a great game. Man, you we said Liverpool Man United should be so. We shouldn't hold our breath. I don't think Arsenal go there. No, they won't. No, um, no they there, definitely they? won't. No. No. That's the kind of game, though, isn't it? That um, well, for either team, really, isn't it? If they could like get a three points there, either side, it really does like, send a little bit of a message, <laughs> doesn't it? And a statement. Is that us. next Saturday, guys? Are we? Is it matter? Is it Saturday the twenty third? Is it five thirty Saturday? Um, Liverpool Arsenal one for yeah. match of the day. Obviously, uh, are you working on that one, Micah? Oh. Indeed, I am. I am as all three of us uh, there then. Yeah, we're at the... Uh, <laughs> the band is back together on Saturday. It's been a little while for a match of the day, hasn't it? It um, has, it uh, has. But it's always nice when um, when you do match of the day that you when you look at the fixtures, um, obviously but, yeah, lots of good games, but the three o'clock ones, but it's the late game we always look at because that's the, you know you sit there and you want something to look forward to. <laughs> Don't you want to like a biggie? Yeah, but before we go on, can I just ask you to, because you've not been doing it for years, you know the energy in Match of the Day, and I know we've talked about the logistics of Match of the Day, yeah. but how do you get your energy at 10.30 at night? Because I come in, I come in the door at 12.30, I'm absolutely buzzing. Honestly, <laughs> I'm loving all the games. I, I feel like I'm on top of the world. You're thinking, wow. What a job this is. Like, how privileged are we to watch yeah. every single game? you got your fantasy football on there. It's brilliant. You get to about seven o'clock <laughs> and your, your eyes just start going. I'm like, but we've not finished. We've not finished. And then we've got to sort of get you doing your analysis, which keeps your mind ticking over. And then I start flagging about nine, quarter past nine. To be honest, Michael, when I've watched you, you start, <laughs> seem to start flagging about 10.30, 10.45. <laughs> <laughs> not, not true. I'll tell you exactly what happens, Micah. Adrenaline. I know, yeah. Of but... live television. It, it, I can't tell you how many times. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. That period in the evening. I think particularly after the 5.30 game, the 7.30 to, to 9.00. So we kind of, that's when we... A lot of work happens in there for an hour or so. For it, you, you guys are sorting out your analysis with the analysis team. Um, I'm fiddling around with the script and we're discussing running orders and and, and stuff. And I'm I write the words for the for the trail that goes out just before the news. And then there comes a period of about I don't know, say, like that kind of eight thirty yeah. to nine thirty, ten o'clock, where it's you just do feel like. I just want to go to bed. It's my bedtime, especially me at my age. You know, I'd normally I'd take my meds out, <laughs> get, my, you get the stammer lift up, the stammer yeah. lift up the stairs and get in, in, in my bed. As Viv Anderson used to say, every single day, he used to, after training when we were with England, he used to say, right, that's all I'm going to do. Nice little nap now. Nice little nap. <laughs> Crispy white sheets, marshmallow pillow. Like, he said it every, every day. Does it not depend how big you've been partying on Friday night, how knackered you are on Sunday? Saturday. It does make it. No, difference. it's just one up with you two helmets and you've got no banter. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Helmets. Oh. I like that's a good old word, you helmets. Helmets. No, no, helmets. No, no, no. It's a great it? word. I quite like it. Yeah, but I think genuinely though, you do, don't you? But, but and you sometimes sit we get I, I get in the studio around an hour before um, we start and um like read through the script practice because obviously it's a very kind of regimented show match of the day because we've got sometimes six sometimes seven sometimes eight games whatever on a Saturday and and you've got to make sure the timings are right because it's live television and, and, and you don't want to drop the last game so um uh, but yeah, then then you you two get in around I don't know ten o'clock ish, don't you? And sit down and we kind of discuss a few things and 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 then I always think when that you always, however tired you feel, when when that red light goes on, you're live on telly. It just it, I think it's a bit like that in football though. I mean, sometimes you go into a game, don't you? Do you pre-match warm up? You think, oh, I don't feel very good today. Oh God! But then once the game starts and yeah, adrenaline kicks yeah. in goes around your body yeah you're livening up yeah <laughs> talking of livening up Villa Villa have maintained oh. their lively pace haven't they the top late winner turned it round uh, Ben Mee sending off was uh, was probably tantamount yeah I watched that game as well and um, 
Brentford were brilliant defensively and Villa could not find a way through at all. For 70 minutes, it was like they're banging their heads against a brick wall uh, because defensively they were really good. And then all of a sudden, the Ben Mee red card. And it was a red card because it, it was a terrible challenge, um, most unlike him. Uh, and it deserved a red card. And then straight away, where they didn't have any spare men at all um, in the box, Villa, they were always marked. Once he'd gone off, spare men everywhere and got the first one and then there was only one team going to win it and you've got to give them huge credit because how many times have we said just got to find a way and we know that's a really tough place to go to so yeah um, and Ollie Watkins having <laughs> having a row with a fan behind the goal because he's been abusing him all game and he's yeah he did yeah he pointed his finger through the net and he could he could he could just I mean it's, I've, I've been there myself it gives it did not spur you on I mean it's just the incentive when you're getting hammered off fans you think oh, you yeah. I'm gonna have the last laugh here and, <laughs> and he did and he did he, and he's entitled to do exactly do what he did Ollie Watkins he got his goal, just pointed at the block and probably thinking, that's for you, mate. Don't ever abuse me again. <laughs> Brilliant. The way he's going, he's, going to, he's, he's playing himself very much into the England squad yeah. in the summer. That's nine goals, nine assists this season. He's got a, a, a fantastic work ethic and energy when he plays as well. Um, you know, there are players that do continue to improve in their career. And I think Unai Emery probably takes credit for the way that Villa players has helped him. Um, some players don't they look massively promising and then stop improving um, so you, you know he's, he's I think he's probably playing himself as, as Harry Kane's substitute if you like yeah I think what's good about him though guys is how many times we when we're looking at analysis and we're just saying make a run in behind and we know Kane with his quality can come to feet really good pass for the ball cute round the box can do he's like a complete striker cane but when you've got someone who can stretch the opposition i would hate to play against him because he works hard and he constantly wants to run in, in behind me and I, I think that's what he's got on any other striker at this moment in time where it's easy just to come and touch the ball and wait for something he stretches people and that's going to help with him deciding whether or how much minutes he gets, especially for England. He's having a great season, and he's pivotal to what Aston Villa do. Um, mm. They have to, they have to keep him fit at all costs because he's, yeah, he's flying, full of confidence, and everything good about Villa he epitomises. Yeah, level on points um, with Liverpool, um, and one point behind Arsenal. Who would have thunk it? Unbelievable. Eh? They, they can actually, they, <laughs> if if results go for them next weekend, they could actually be top at Christmas. Which, mm. I mean, even even the biggest Villa fans would never ever have thought that. Never. Um, so right. so that just tells you what the the job that Unai Emery's doing. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Um, can they do a Leicester? Um, we'll see later in the season. Um, we'll be back with more um, chat around the weekend's football very shortly. But for now, let's just take a little breather. Welcome back to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, Alan Shearer and uh, Micah Richards. Um, Micah, Manchester City, I mean, what's, go what's going on? 2-0 up against Palace, dominating the whole game and then it just shows you when you're in those little blips of poor form or, or when things are not going quite your way. Um, normally City would have seen that game off or if Palace got one goal, they wouldn't get another. City have gone in and banged one at the other end, but... It's not quite happening for them at the moment. You know, I, I went to the game as well. I, I went to uh, the Etihad. It, the atmosphere was, was really good. Like, City are like an al algorithm, aren't they? They just sort of keep going and going. They sort of be put into play and they do what they do. Micah, well, before we go on, finally someone that knows what an algorithm is because I, I, I keep hearing that word and stuff. I don't, I don't know what you it don't, is. You <laughs> can, you, can you explain to me? So an algorithm, so if you've got a, let me give you Hang a... Hang on, give him 15 minutes to think here. I know, that's what I'm asking. Me. If you can come up with the, if you get the right answer to this, I'll be... Oh, no, 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 but it depends on, on what context. I'm giving it a football context. That's all I no? want, Micah, football okay. context. So if you look at the way Pep's teams play, the way he builds and sets up his teams, they follow a certain pattern. 
Yes. That's what I would call an algorithm. So going forward and what they normally do, everyone knows their jobs with, within the team and what they have to do. So that is an algorithm for... So, so algorithm means tactics. Well, I mean, you can say tactics if you want, but I, I, algorithm sounds sexy, doesn't I it? Like, no, I, no, I just want to... Uh, no, I mean, obviously, think it's like it's done, when, we, when we do even the podcasts and people say it's the numbers, well, it's all algorithms. And I, I always think, yeah, okay, it's algorithms. <laughs> what, what the f*** does it mean? <laughs> is it data? Is it, yes. Yeah. Well, yes, it is. But it's, oh, you know what it is? The, the things that I would say, it is uh, a mixture of things put together that works really well. And, okay, so say like your phone. Your phone could have the, a similar algorithm until there's an update. And then the algorithm changes to be something different. So City's algorithm is them dominating the ball, playing in, in, into little pockets, and you know what a Manchester City team looks like. So when you say style of play, I would say that's Man City's algorithm. We know what it is. Yeah. But defensively, at this moment, there's been a glitch in the algorithm. The algorithms are all yeah. over the place. <laughs> All over the place. I've, I've, I've got it here. I've got the I've got the actual definition of algorithm here. A process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problem solving operations, especially by a computer. Oh, which is okay. the brain of Pep Guardiola. <laughs> is basically yes. what we're talking about. That's what an algorithm is. And uh, and now we know. We we we're, we're here to educate on this show. We're here to educate. But defensively, they just it's not even defensively, it's when they get caught in transition, because they always have the ball in forward areas, there was it takes them longer than other teams to get back into the right shape to defend properly. Yeah. This, if I was playing centre half in this team, I, I'd be pulling my hair out. They wouldn't be anywhere near the top. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pulling my hair out. You've got wingers at least they running at full pace of you on the counter attack where well, you've got to move. I just think at the moment, it's it's just not ticking the way, no. but they're not playing badly. That's no. the thing. They're not and, playing and badly Stone, going forward. Stones is coming back. And once he joins that partnership, him, him and algorithm at the back, <laughs> they'll be fine. <laughs> what is it, Micah? Oh, is, it, is it teams sussing them out or is it Man City having a bit of a bad spell? I think, Alan, it's Man City not being ruthless enough because all the games that they've played last season, they would finish teams off 2-0 up at the Etihad. And Palace come back 2-2. That rarely happens ever. Teams might draw with them and score first and then Man City come back and, and get a draw or get a win, but 2 nil up and throwing that away. Yeah. If Haaland had been playing, though, it might have been all, it, it might have been yeah. all over. But we didn't used to have to say yeah. that uh, about Manchester City. But credit, credit to Crystal Palace for, for coming back. And, and it seems to me that teams that are having a go at Manchester mm. City, and Palace didn't really do it until the last 10, 15 minutes um, because they were hanging on. But the teams that have had a real go at them, look at Aston Villa just a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, that thing about only having a couple of players back and stuff. It's, you know, if, you, if you're if you brave enough to take them on, you might get a good spanking, but you, you also yeah. might get yourself a good result. And it's quite refreshing rather than watch a team just... I mean, Palace did it, did it to be honest. It looked like going to be one of those teams that goes goes to the Etihad, sits back for 80 minutes and loses 2-0. But in the end, they they somehow got they got out of it. Um, elsewhere, um, what about... Q, Q, Castle or Newcastle? Castle. Okay. <laughs> I, thought that's on, what you were, uh, I thought that's what you were going to say, yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't, but go on. Yeah, another sending off that changed the, uh, the, changed the game. I thought it was... Yeah. Slightly harsh, actually. I'm not sure. Yeah, you did. You were text. You were texting on the mm. on the chat. I. Um, the only thing I could see. I mean, I think as players, we know exactly what happened there. He went. He went to go to get the ball with his foot, and yeah. then he realised he wasn't getting it. And then he's always. It was a b kind of bizarre leap. Um, and then he's realised what he's done. He's tried to come out, but he's turned his back. And his back's hit the fella in the face. So you can understand there was no intent. I guess they've turned it over because of the, the the lack of control and a couple of the replays. It 
as these things do, they look worse. But mm. there was a one in uh, there was a one Sufal for West in West Ham. Uh, yes, uh, yes, against Wolves. I mean, how on earth that one Probably wasn't a red worse. card and the Jimenez was. Um, but yeah, but Newcastle back to winning ways. Young kid, seventeen year old, scoring his first ever. Miley. Premier oh. League goal. Smiley, home, Miley. In what front of the Gallagher end. What a feeling for him and his family, eh? 17. Brilliant. Great for him. There was a brilliant bit at the end. He was interviewed with Gamares. And, um, I mean, Gamares is, is, is not exactly old, but he, he, looked, <laughs> yeah. like his, he looked like his eldest son. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> good, good for him. On a serious note, though, what's he, he's played... I know he didn't start on, on Saturday. He got, yeah, yeah, another couple of bad injuries, Al. Um but he's he's been incredibly consistent for a young for a player of of just what seventeen years. Yeah, I mean he probably probably wouldn't have got in had it not had it been for the uh, the injury situ- situation. But you know when you when you're given a chance, uh, and obviously he's got ability because he was on the fringe and and he was in the squad and sub and what have you. So there's obviously ability in there. But when you when you're given your chance for whatever reason, you've got to go in there and make the most of it and. He's done that. I mean, he, uh, the biggest compliment I can pl- uh, pay him is he just doesn't look out of, of place at all. He looks as if he belongs there and he's been there for a long time and great for him. As I said, what a, what a moment. Do you, do you know, it reminds me of a, a little bit. Go on. Not necessarily in the way he plays, but in the way he moves because he doesn't, he doesn't automatically look like a footballer. The when he, He's got like a, a running style that's... That's slightly stiff. And do you know who it reminds me of? Someone else who used to play for Newcastle. Chris Waddle. Uh-huh. Chris Waddle, in the way he moves, because you look at Chris, and Chris never looked like a, a footballer, and he had a kind of wooden style in the way he ran, but he'd drop his shoulder. He's, he beat players like without ever looking like he's incredibly technically gifted, but he was technically gifted. Um, and this... A Miley, in a way, reminds me certainly of the way mm. he moves and with the grace that he goes past and beats players. He's not he's not a wide man like Chris was and with an incredible cross with the ball. Um, but do you see yeah. what I mean in terms of his gait and the way he actually he, he wanders around the pitch? No, I do. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, obviously, different positions and different players. Um, but yeah, he's. Um, I mean, he when he you can imagine him in. Two or three years' time, also when he sort of fills out a little bit as well, because you're right, he's still he's still a, yeah. a boy, really, isn't he? At, uh, at that age, but um, yeah, he's he's he's, he's yeah. real. Did you talent. did you see his interview? Did you see the interview he did after the the, the midweek games in in, in the Champions yeah. League? And I think someone asked him, um, "Oh, what do you make? Did you do you mates come and watch you?" And um, in the game, he went. He said, no, no, they're, they're all at school. <laughs> Brilliant. Good for him. Nice. He's a really nice yeah, lad. He is. Uh, big, big win for, for Newcastle in that game. Um, Everton. Wow. I'm starting to think this 10-point reduction could cost them the league title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, we said, though, didn't we? We said they had a massive improvement, Everton. Uh, we didn't see the game, obviously, because we couldn't watch it, or I couldn't watch it. And you have to give them credit now because they're just a well-organised football team who's got confidence playing good football, all being marshaled by the, the manager. And they're, and they're a joy to doing. watch now. The absolute joy to watch. That's what's so, so good. And then Burnley. Burnley are letting me down. Burnley oh. are letting me down. I said at the start they was finishing top top ten, and they're just a shadow of the team that they were last year. And I know it's a different league, but all the things they was doing, they're not doing, or they're still making naive mistakes. And I just didn't think this would be happening. Well, they look like a team of of, of a mix of young players and um, perhaps players that have got a lot of experience, but. Have they got the quality, regardless of the way they play, in there to 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 stay up? Not not on the evidence we're seeing, though. No I thought chance. yes, but on the evidence that we're seeing, it doesn't look like it. They need to regroup in January. I don't know what they need to to bring in 
They need to bring in some confidence into the camp, stick to what he's doing, but add better quality in certain areas and give it a right good go. Because at this moment in time, you can't say they're not working hard because they are working hard, but they just don't look at the level required, which I can't believe I'm saying this. There was my tip to finish in the top half and now it looks like they're going to be bottom. They're very vulnerable to dead ball situations, yeah. aren't they? Because, I mean, they've, they've got a very young goalkeeper in there that obviously it's, it's, he makes some good saves and stuff, but he, it, it, at the moment he looks like a young goalkeeper that kind of bullying him. I don't know whether either you saw um, Ashley on Saturday night. Shay Given really was... Good. Um, it, I thought it was really an interesting bit of punditry on, on yeah. goalkeeping because he made a couple of points that actually I hope James Trafford watched because he, he could learn from from someone that was obviously not a massive goalkeeper in terms yeah. of yeah. stature, Shea Given, but he was really interesting how he could you know make himself a little bit bigger in certain ways, jump mm. off one leg. He said things that, which I think in, in punditry is always the most important thing that if you're watching at home, you want to hear something that perhaps you don't yeah. recognise yourself. And and me as someone who's been in the game all his life, I never really thought about how goalkeepers leap, how you get an extra few inches, etc. I thought it, it was, was really a really good, good piece, actually. She she did. Um, yeah. But we have we have been seeing in terms of teams targeting Burnley and putting balls into the box, particularly set pieces on top of uh, on top of him because. Yeah, he doesn't look comfortable at all with balls coming in, crosses into the box, and they, they can't defend it's, them. It's, it's looking very difficult for the bottom three. I suppose if they were looking above, I think they'd kind of be hoping that Nottingham Forest continue their their poor run of form. Yeah, I mean, we said it before about Steve, haven't we? He seems to be under huge pressure there, um, which I think is harsh, but he knows as well as everyone that you're, you're in the results game and and Forrester on a really poor run at this moment in time, so they need to pick yeah. up pretty quickly. Um, Spurs, Spurs, they, I mean, a, a week or so ago, it was all a little bit doom and gloom after the great starts of the season, but they've they've bounced back with some, some really good results, excellent performances, despite still having, obviously, two or three of their, their best players missing. But um, I must say, I do enjoy watching watching their football and and ball ball is great isn't it (laughs) even you know and i I, it's refreshing that you know regardless of what happens we're gonna go for it we're gonna enjoy our football um and i mean we we all know that it's results driven business and and and, and should they collapse everyone will be going see you can't play that way you can't do this but i really enjoy it it's great to watch and that's ultimately what it should be kulisevsky is back to his best as well isn't he on on friday night he was Excellent. He he works so hard. Got such a good left foot. I like the the positions he picks up as well. Even if he plays in the middle in the number ten role with Johnson playing on the right, he just got the freedom to do whatever he wants. And he seems as though he's relishing it. Absolutely wonderful play. And Son going to the to left, which allows Richarlison to be back amongst the goals. I just think the managers, there's little tweaks that he's made has just helped the team so much. Starting with Son up front and then mi- bringing Rich Allison up there. Yeah. And long may it continue. Yeah. Kulisewski's ran more than any other player this season. Um, That's madness. Is that right? Apparently. He's a workaholic. He doesn't, but it's just, just his run though. It's like he presses mm. and he's quick. So you have players who will do up and down running. So they used to be your midfielders, like your, your number... Number eight will go back and forth and back and forth. But it's the sprints that he puts in as well. How much he does of the sprinting, not just the long running. He's, his intensity, which he runs at, is ridiculous. And it works for this team so much and allows the fullbacks to get involved and join in, win the ball really high. He's just been a joy to watch this season. It's hard to get the ball off him. Isn't it? I mean, it's, yeah. It's weird, his shoulders. Like, a little bit like Grealish in a way. Yes. That he's yeah. strong and powerful and, yeah. And have stepped up. Haven't we? We said it before that they had to with him leaving, Harry leaving. Can the players that were already there step up and give another 5 10% and that, they're, they're doing that. And a better side without hey, Harry Kane or? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Micah. Oh dear. Are they a better side without Harry Kane? <laughs> 
Micah, are you now? <laughs> are you now actually going to say it? I'll tell you at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the great f- hang on a minute is that is that Creosote, Creosote yeah. can see get off there. your fence Creosote do you know what Cre- <laughs> do you know what Creosote is Micah oh is that for your ass is it <laughs> <laughs> no you idiot <laughs> What's, uh, what's Creosote, it's mate? It's paint on fences to oh, stand uh, on the fence. You're on the fence. I thought, fence. thought it, was, it was some cream for when your ass is so from sitting That's on the fence. and shoot it, cream, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Kyle's cream. <laughs> creosote. I'll tell you what, Mike, if you paint Creosote on your ass, I don't know what would happen. Oh, dear, man. Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh, that's, fa- that's fantastic. On, on, <laughs> have, you, have you seen the bit? I mean, we're doing this, as, as I said, on a, a Monday morning. Um, um, it'll be out to you on Monday afternoon. Big game tonight. Big game tonight. The Vardy Rooney Derby. Oh! Birmingham City, Leicester City. Um, it's a big. I mean, if, 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 if Sky don't get. Colleen and Rebecca Vardy in the studio. <laughs> uh, they've missed a trick. I mean, as they're two pundits, I think that would be really good. You could call, I don't know, what could call it? Um, Wagamamas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Wagamamas, I like that one. It's not bad, is it? I think it's quite good. I think that would be amazing. Get them on co-coms, the two of them. <laughs> Uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't last, but it's, um, oh, it's quite big. Absolutely yeah. So that, that'd be an interesting uh, one to watch. Um, further afield, um, two goals for Kane, one for Bellingham again. <laughs> the English boys doing well abroad. Harry's broke the record, didn't is, he, in terms of getting to 20 Bundesliga goals? Something, he, something like yeah. that, isn't it? He's got 14 he's in really games, good was company it? as well. <laughs> yeah, before they now go on a little bit of a winter break, sensibly, which. Um, um, I mean, I watched the Bayern Munich game last night and um, Alfonso Davis was a bit sharp. Oh, I mean, he was good. good um, for those of you who don't know, um, young player was, um, he was actually a, a, a refugee. He had to, had to flee and ended up in, in, in Canada and, and broke through there. Then was signed by signed by Bayern Munich. And, um, good player. Incredibly quick player. So good. Such Ridiculous. a good format. Yeah, like good him. player. Ridiculous. Looking at that winter break that they have in, in, in Germany, I mean, we've kind of brought one in, <laughs> although we haven't really. Do we, well, I think we get half the teams get one weekend off and then half the teams get another weekend off. Um, but Germany has always done it properly. Um, and with someone like Harry Kane, who's in his 30s now, um, that might help for the Euros. A little bit of Would you enjoy it, having a break and no football over Christmas and New Year? God, would you? Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, only could. Yeah, just chill out for Christmas <laughs> and have, enjoy Stop it. Stop thinking about Maybe yourself. Go away, a week sunshine. <laughs> I thought that you Stop asked thinking me. Stop as, as thinking as a about player yourself. And as a pundit. You, me. you just said, would you oh, like it? Man. You're thinking about. You're thinking about having a holiday, man. You're thinking about not travelling up to oh, match yeah. of the day because yeah. you can go on the on a beach somewhere. Well, yeah, I mean, Neymar, Neymar used to, I mean, I think he still does. He's never missed the Brazil carnival. I think he's, I think he's, I've heard, I don't know whether it's true, that he has it written in his contract that he has to have the weekend off off of the Brazil carnival. And the Rio carnival. I mean, I don't know whether it's actually true, um, but he does always seem to not play uh, for that. that If you've been to a carnival, you'd understand why he wants it. Oh, yeah. And he never Jeez. misses. He also never misses his sister's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. Oh. You can do that when you're that good, though. You know. You know what? I, just quickly on that point, I think you, you raise a really good point, though, guys. Because how many times do we say at the end of the season, if they would have just had the winter break, you know, like other teams, and we're talking about key players, we're talking about Kane and and Bellingham having that, and they could be the difference maker. Mm-hmm in the tournament. So I actually think yeah. that could help us a lot. I wouldn't disagree. Um, moment of the week. Um, I've got a couple. I want to give a, a we, we like to pop down the leagues occasionally. Um, Stockport County. I mean, they're going really well. Top of League Two uh, and they beat Sutton 8-0. 8-0 on Saturday. 
Um, wow. Dave, I think Dave Challen is the well, he is the coach there. He's, he's, he's done an amazing job. I didn't see that result actually at the weekend. Eight nil. I know they're uh, I know they're flying, but I didn't uh, I didn't see that result. So good that we give them a mention. I had a Wrexham who, yeah. who won again. Um, I think they're going to go up again, Imagine aren't it, yeah. they, Wrexham? I think the way it's going. Um, but we're going to give the moment of the week to uh, for an assist, which I don't normally like to do because it's the people who pop it in the net that deserve the most credit. Um, did you see Victor Ossiman? For Napoli. Ooh. Have you seen the assist? I didn't see the assist, no. Well, everyone, get on get on there, search it, find it. He does like a load of juggling, 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 twists around, turns the defender, then knocks it across. Yes, I did see it. I did see but it it wasn't it wasn't clean though, was it? It was like it was juggling, juggling, not going nowhere. <laughs> Looked like he was about to shoot, to shoot, and then someone taps it. I was like, I was like, oh, this looks good, this looks yeah. good. Actually, yeah, it was a bit scruffy sure at the end. Yeah. Right, name the goal scorer. Ooh. I know you know who it is, but can you say it? Ooh. Oh! Uh, Kravaskelia. Yeah, beautiful. Well, there. Good, Mike. <laughs> uh, probably, probably nowhere near it, but beautifully done. Yes, it was. Yeah. You know why? Because we did this on Champions League, yeah. and I've had to say it about 20 times. It's so annoying. Kravat Skelia. He's a good player as well. The jo- they call him the Georgian Maradona. Mm-hmm. Anyone Georgia. would think Mike yeah, has yeah. been sat on Creso. <laughs> 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 but the real moment of the weekend, I, I think, is that our very good friend, um, Ian Wright, has decided um, that this will be his last season of doing Match of the Day. Um could have a bit of fun but I, I actually want to say something heartfelt that he's been um, working with him has been an absolute pleasure a privilege and a hell of a lot of fun um, over a, a, well, a long period of, of time I know he does quite a bit with with ITV and I think I believe that will continue but um, um, I want to wish Wrighty all the very best I'll see him before the end of the season because he'll do some more shows but um, I love that fella and um, he's been he's been an absolute delight to work with. Yeah, he's great, and he's um, he's just a bundle of energy, isn't he? That like the days are a lot shorter. Um, it match of the day when you're working with him because yeah. of the energy that he brings and the happiness and the excitement and the madness and <laughs> everything that comes <laughs> right in. Everyone loves him. Yeah, well, you've kind of, you've kind of dismantled him, um, Mike, over the. The past year or so. so. <laughs> That's why he's leaving. He knows Mike is a threat. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Ryan's decision had nothing to do <laughs> with me. Let's get that straight here because I'll be trending. Oh, Micah, he's not half a, half a career as a righty. He's not half, Ma- he's Micah, not half, you're going to be body. trending because of your career so line anyway, so I won't worry about it. <laughs> No, right. But what can we say about righty? I mean, when I first started doing punditry and I thought, ooh, I liked his style. I liked his style because he was just himself, you know? I-, I felt as though like he could go on air and be yourself. So when I first came into punditry, it's like, I looked at what uh, righty did in terms of being himself and just having that energy. So I owe a lot to righty yeah. just for looking up to, seeing him on TV, the way he did things. So I, I want to wish him all the best. Absolutely. But um, we'll see him in a number of match of the days before we the will. end of the season. Um, Ian, um, we love you. Yeah. Um, and that's it from us. Goodbye. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>